Hello. Sorry for my absence recently. Uh, the whole family got sick. When you've got a young kid, uh, if one person gets sick, it just kind of migrates through the rest of the family. But I'm back and I'm putting together several videos, including a soon to be finished uh, response to a wonderful comment about stabilization. So I'm looking forward to getting that uh, finished up and out. But right now I'd like to respond to a question about settings for doing astrophotography. So let's get going. So we had a great question this week about correct settings for doing astrophotography. And for this conversation, I'm going to assume that we want to do pinpoint stars in the sky and uh, identifiable Milky Way galaxy, not star trails. We can deal with that in another video. But for pinpoint stars, it's a pretty simple procedure. And I am going to say that I'm going to start by assuming you're shooting with a full frame camera. I'm going to then tell you how to adapt this if you're not. No problem. And second, you do need to shoot in manual. If you try to shoot astrophotography in aperture priority or shutter priority or God forbid auto, it's just not gonna work. We need to be in manual. I'm gonna tell you how to do it. So first, we take your aperture, open it up to the brightest setting that you can possibly do on your lens. This is why astrophotography lenses are very bright. We need as much light as we can let in. I personally like shooting with the 16 to 35 2.8, but whatever wide and bright lens you have, is going to be able to work. So then we're going to frame up your shot before doing anything else. And the reason why is to do appropriate astrophotography, we're going to be uh, initially using the rule of 500. Now you're going to see some people saying that they've had to fudge it this way or that from the rule of 500, and there's definitely experimentation to be done. However, this is a great place for someone new to astrophotography to begin. The rule of 500, it couldn't be simpler. Here's how you do it. Frame up the shot the way that you want. Then take that number and divide it into 500. Whatever you come up with, that is the longest shutter speed you can do before the rotation of Earth is going to cause motion blur. So uh, for instance, if you framed up the shot at 50 millimeters, you would be able, be able to shoot for no longer than 10 seconds. But if you widened your shot, your field of view, to 25 millimeters, you could shoot for 20 seconds. So we've already got our aperture at the brightest <clears throat> that it can be. Frame up your shot and that will dictate your shutter speed. We now have two points in our triangle. At this point, we're gonna take our ISO and just bring it up to whatever it needs to be to get the shot. Typically speaking, um, if you're shooting in a really dark environment, of course, without a lot of light pollution, shooting the Milky Way galaxy, if you're shooting at f2.8, you will probably need something approaching uh, 6400 ISO. That would not be uncommon. If you're shooting with an f4 lens, it's going to go even higher still. So you can see why shooting with really bright lenses is so powerful. So aperture the brightest it can be. We're going to set the shutter speed at whatever's dictated by the rule of 500, and then the brightness of the shot is controlled by the ISO. Bring it up until the picture is the appropriate brightness. Now what's going to be interesting is that you will be surprised that the image will look a certain brightness on your screen, and when you get it home, it's going to be darker. And the reason is you're so light sensitive with your eyes when you're out in the pitch black uh, uh, shooting the Milky Way galaxy. So make that picture on the screen brighter than you think it needs to be in order to wind up with the shot that you want. Now, what if you're not shooting with a full frame camera? What if you're shooting with an APS-C camera? All we do is change it to the rule of 300. You could say it's closer to 320, but 300 is easier to remember and it will give you an appropriate shot. So APS-C, do the rule of 300. And if you're shooting with a 4 thirds camera, it's the rule of 250. All right, so you're going to take the focal length and divide it in and wind up with an answer based on those numbers, 300, uh, 320, technically speaking, with APS-C or 250. That is how you're going to derive an appropriate uh, aperture, shutter speed, and ISO combination when you are shooting astrophotography. I hope that helps and gets you started shooting astro. It's one of the most fun things that we do in this craft. I really enjoy it and I find it very relaxing. Um, if there is a particular type of shooting you want me to tackle or uh, an issue you've had in shooting, get into the comments. I'd love to hear about it. If this video has been useful for you, of course, I'm going to encourage you to like and subscribe. It's free. I appreciate it. Uh, and until next time, have a wonderful day. Bye.